Hi, Mr. Corsi here. In this question, we're asked to, first of all, express this quadratic expression in a different form. This, you'll recall, is completing the square. So we'll take the expression x squared minus 6x minus 81. And that's the expression that we're trying to write basically as two identical brackets, something squared. We want x squared minus 6x, etc. to be written as something times something, where both these brackets are the same. It's obvious that we'd need for our first, our first, remember the FOIL expansion, first term, the first in each bracket would give us x squared. Now the outsides and the insides, remember this number here and this number here are going to be the same. So we require certain number of x and another number of x to be minus 6x. Well, half will be contributed from each part. Half of this negative 6x will come from here and half of it will come from here. Let's check that with doing our outside terms. x times negative 3 will be negative 3x and the inside two, negative 3 times x, will give us another negative 3x, which contributes to the negative 6. So if we multiply this out, x squared minus 3x minus 3x, the lasts give us minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9. Now that's not what we've got there. So if we were to write this as x minus 3 times x minus 3, we would not have a negative 81 in there. In fact, we've got a plus 9, which is not right. So let's take away that 9. So that's gone. And we've now got an x squared minus 6x, and we want a minus 81. So let's just put that on. So our final rearrangement of this is x minus 3 squared Minus 9 minus 81 is minus 90. Now, it would be wise at this stage in your work always to check that when you expand what you've achieved, you actually do get what you're supposed to get. So there's your x squared minus 3x minus 3x, outsides and insides, and the last give us plus 9, minus 90. So we're ending up with x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 90 is minus 81. And that's what we were supposed to get. So that's us lit written that in the form x minus p, where p happens to be 3, plus q, where q is negative 90. So that's part one of this question. Let's now move on to part two. And it states that we have to find the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph of this. Now, remember graphs of quadratics are parabolas, either concave upwards, concave downwards. In this case, it's a positive x squared term, so we're going to get something that looks like this. And we do know that uh, y equals x squared, centred on the origin, there's your y equals x squared, can be moved around in various ways. First of all, this negative 3 in here would take this y equals x squared graph and move it 3 to the right. So there's y equals x minus 3 squared. This negative 90 then pulls this graph down 90 units. That neither moves it right nor left. The axis of symmetry would therefore be through this point 3, 0 and therefore x equals 3 would be the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry 
is x equals 3. So that's part A of this question. So let's now move on to part B of this question. And this asks us to find the roots of this equation. We're to take the equation x squared minus 6x minus 81 equals 0 and solve it. Find the roots. Now there are two ways of doing this. We could just proceed as we normally do and use the quadratic formula here uh, to find the roots. Or let's use the work that we've already done in part A where we've managed to rewrite x squared minus 6x minus 81 in this special form. We've completed the square. And let's work on this form of the equation. So let's add 90 to both sides. Remember we're trying to find x on its own. We'd now have to get rid of this square. And remember, opposite of squaring is square rooting. So we would take the square root of both sides. But there is a problem that arises. Let's have a look at a simpler case where we've maybe got x squared equals 16. Now we know that the answers to this are x equals 4 or negative 4. Because negative 4 times negative 4 does give us 16. And 4 is the positive square root of 16. Negative 4 is the negative square root of 16. Now, it is implied when you write down the square root sign that that's positive value. You would have to definitely put a negative in there to imply the negative value. So in here we have a positive square root of 90 and also a negative square root of 90. So there's two possibilities. So let's keep going. Let's add 3 to both sides. We usually add 3 at the end, but let's add it at the front. 3 plus or minus the square root of 90. And bear in mind what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it into this form. D, that would appear to be 3, plus or minus. And then it looks very much like they want us to simplify the square root of 90. Now that's fairly straightforward because we're looking for perfect squares since they have exact square roots. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 10 we can't reduce further. Factors of 10 are 2 and 5. Square root of 2, square root of 5, they don't reduce any further. So this can be written as 3 root 10. So we have x being 3 plus or minus 3 root 10. And let's compare it with the form that we're asked to write the roots in, d plus or minus d root e. And in actual fact, it says the values of d and e are what we're requiring. So looking at this, it's clear that the value of d is 3 and the value of e is 10. So d is 3 and e is 10. As I said, there's another way of doing it, and that would be working through the full quadratic formula method and reducing the roots to the same form. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out. Thanks for watching this video.